Welcome to the Chineng Qigong Community Podcast, Wisdom Qigong Uncovered. My name is Thorsten Lüdecke, and this is today's story. When great-grandmother Hilda Brown was told she should go into assisted living, she turned her life upside down and coincidentally ended up on Hawaii, living in a tiny shanty with three young girls. This is where she met Chineng Qigong. Follow her on her journey towards life of health, happiness, adventure and friendship. Meeting incredible people along the way and deciding to become a Hunyan Chi therapist herself. Now this is her story. Hilda lives in Canada at the beautiful Lake Echo and uh, she is already, may I, may I give that away, uh, Hilda, 82, is that no, your No, no, I'd like people to guess instead. Okay, okay, oh, let's guess them. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, Hilda yeah. came to Chinen Qigong uh, rather in a, at a later stage of her life. She only discovered it seven years ago, but she took initiative. Uh, she decided to join the Unyanchi therapy program. She travels to Austria, to uh, Cyprus, uh, to join the on-site module. And she is uh, really an inspiration for many, many people. So I thought, you know, let's have a chat with Hilda and see how she discovered Chinen Qigong, uh, what it means for her and uh, yeah, what is the secret to her everlasting youth. Hilda, welcome to the show. Thank you. Here I am. Yes. Um, so, um, seven years ago, my life went kind of sideways. In fact, it went completely upside down. And, and um, it was one day when my husband said to me, um, I can't do this anymore. And we, we had been working out a gym. We wanted to stay healthy. I had always told him we were going to dance at 100. And he would laugh because he wasn't even a dancer. And I said, I would say to him, well, they won't care how we, what we're doing. They'll just be happy we're up. Okay, walking. And so anyway, within three months, he was diagnosed with an aggressive uh, cancer. And um, it took him down in six weeks. So I lost my love. I lost my, my children, lost their father. We have, I have four children, nine grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren now. So that gives you a bit of my, of my age. So anyway, um, I decided after much upset with my own health, because a year out on the anniversary of his death, I was given the call that I had breast cancer. Well, that was not what I wanted to hear. Because I was living my life in a lovely home, running in Airbnb, which was going to be my retirement. So suddenly, my life went sideways, and I, um, I um, went through a lot of diagnosis. I went through complete a bilateral mastectomy, and then ended up with blood clots, and actually had died when my daughter walked in the door i just collapsed and i had my had lungs my lungs both had blood clots and i went down and within a minute i was at the hospital i lived close to the hospital which was a blessing and um she also she's a nurse she knew she because i had collapsed into the couch she knew she had to throw move me and she rolled me down and later on told me I didn't know you could be so heavy, and um, that's what you call dead weight. So, needless to say, um, they couldn't do anything normal with me because I was all wrapped up. I had like a bikini that was covering where the surgery had been, and um, so they couldn't um, put the heart monitors on. So I ended up with like a big bomb on my chest, which they monitored me from, and. I went down three more times. I got to the point where I wasn't allowed to stand up because I would, the clock would move and I'd be gone. So, but anyway, to make a long story short, about the sixth day, they removed everything. And I said to the doctor, can I go home? And she said to me, why would you want to go home? She said, your body shut down three times. I said, I can heal better at home than I can heal here. And off I went. 
So needless to say, with the lungs, and then I developed a condition called group, which was due to ster- alcohol, uh, I mean, not alcohol, steroids. And um, it was just, I was, I was told I should be going into a senior's residence in assisted living. Well, my back went up. And I was not heading into assisted living, and I decided I would fight it. And the doctor said to me, what are you going to do? And I said, well, watch me. I said, um, so I talked to a girl, a friend of mine, and she said, in Europe, when people develop these lung conditions, they take them to the sea and they, to a spa to breathe nice air. And, and so I went, I looked up health spas. I went to health spa, to the uh, salt spa. I threw my drugs away because I figured they were causing the issue. I threw them away. I didn't tell my doctor. I went through a crazy drug withdrawal with that and to the point I could hardly walk. Then about three months after, so the doctor said, okay, we will follow you and we will see what you are doing. And I said, I'm organic. I'm going organic and I'm exercising and I'm, I'm just going to breathe um, salt air. I even bought Himalayan salt lamps, had them in my bedroom and in my living room and, and just made my place a spa. Right. I had, a, I had a deck where I put a water feature and I had lots of plants and I called it my healing garden. Okay. And it was Christmas that year when I said to my, just before I said to my doctor, I was in for a routine appointment. I said, you know what? They didn't make another appointment for an MRI. He said, call them. So I called, and the nurse said, who's calling? I said, Hilda Braun. She said, your lungs are clean. I said, okay, thank you. That's all I need to hear. She said, you want to see the doctor? I said, no. No, it's okay. I'm fine. Okay, I can breathe. Because I was having a hard time breathing, a real hard time. I said, I know I'm fine because my breathing is good. So then Google had become my buddy at night in my bed researching and then I decided in January I need to go somewhere I need to get away I have too many people telling me what to do so um, my granddaughter was in England at the time and I'm booking a flight for England when the uh, lady said oh you have enough points to go to Hawaii air miles I said oh okay so I went into the back burner because I thought I was heading to England. But she then came home and my trip changed and off I went to Hawaii. And that's where I met Qigong because I was living on a seven acre off the grid farm in a shanty with three other young girls. It was a life changing experience. First of all, I learned I could live tiny. I could live small because I had a big house, 3,000 square foot house. I found I could live tiny and I was happy. And um, and then Lou at Kokolulu said to me, we're giving you the retreat. All you have to do for payback is make bread and soup for us, for the group. I said, no problem. I'll cook because I loved, I grew up cooking. So I started to cook their soup and I, and I thought, well, I'm not really interested in this Qigong I'm just going to go and, you know, sit there and fake it. Well, you know what? It didn't take long that Qigong got a hold of me and uh, my heart. The people were amazing. The team was amazing. Uh, Lou was there from China, Britta. It was amazing. And um, I started to, um, I learned, okay, you want to know about What Qigong is all about, it's all about your intentions and learning to live a healthy life, a very healthy life. And I learned, okay, I learned there that we we learned about fermenting. All these things weren't strange to me because my mother had done all those things. Our parents did those things, okay? They, They didn't have the super stories that we have. So... They and we grew all our own. So now here I live in Nova Scotia. I grow all my own food. I am living healthy. Okay. And I pickle everything. So 
But anyway, so uh, ask me a question. So basically, when, if I understand that correctly, you went to Hawaii and you participated in a retreat, in a healing retreat as a participant with Master yeah. Leo and with Britta and other Hudyanshi therapists. Yeah. And then yeah. you discovered, wow, this is really great. This is working for me. There's more in it. And then you decided to become a Hunyanji therapist yourself. Is that tr- well, correct? I, well, not really. At first, I'll tell you, my real reason for joining at first was it was a good group to travel with and to meet. So All I right. decided, because I'm now alone, and I, Rudy and I had done quite a bit of traveling. We loved to, and we always traveled and hiked. We didn't go to all-inclusives. We went to places where we'd rent a car or whatever, and we would adventure out into the mountains and, and get healthy, okay? So, so no, I was not going into Qigong for, for that reason at first. In fact, they know it. They knew it. Britta knew it. I was doing it for self-healing and for, and for, I was safe with them. They were great people to meet. I right. knew if I traveled when I, my first trip was from, was to Cyprus. And I knew that when I got there, even I made this horrendous journey all by myself. Okay. I knew when I got there would be all kinds of hugs for me <laughs> and breathing. Happy to see that I had arrived and I didn't get the one that scared them all the most, I think, was when I was on a train in Austria and everybody thought I was lost. They couldn't find me. But um, I was on the right train coming the right way. So. But what I found, because one of the days they told us we were going to do lachi for an hour, one of the guys told me, Lee told me, I said, you got to be kidding. An hour? They're sitting and doing lachi? That's pretty crazy. So I thought, okay, we'll work on it. I did it. But as soon as we were done, I ended up with this horrible pain under my rib, under my shoulder in the back and so I got up and I walked across the room and, and Lee said, what's wrong with you? I said, I got this crazy pain under my shoulder. He said, where? I said, back under my shoulder. I told you on the left side. He touched it and the pain went away. Instant. Right. Gone. But see, the energy that was flowing through us all. Yes. And the believing that it heals because a lot of it is mind. Yes. Okay, your mind, open and heart, o- open heart, open mind. And you obviously took on a lot of these learnings, you know, the, about the mindset, about uh, the consciousness um, oh, yeah. in your daily life, because you know you are you are you you've gone through a lot of you know, uh, physical illnesses. And yeah, uh, yeah, you're now here, sitting happy. You're traveling again, and uh, obviously enjoying life. So, so how have you taken all of these these lessons into your daily life? How are you integrating that? Uh, are you in touch with the people with your Qigong uh, friends? Uh, how does yeah, that? Happen? I, I can tell you, I have a um, well, my uh, I was still on, in Ontario when I was living in the condo that I told you about. And because I had to sell my house, I couldn't keep. I lost my husband. I always said, I lost my husband. I lost my girls, which are the, my breasts. And I lost, I had to sell my house because I couldn't maintain, uh, even think to keep it. Okay. And I couldn't put that load on my children. Okay. So fortunately, the, the market was amazing. And I had a, I got a good price very, in one day, I had five offers for my house. Yeah. Okay, which is amazing. Okay, and especially in Ontario. So, um, so, um, what did you ask me? Uh, well, how how, have you, how are you integrating all of this knowledge? Oh, yeah. Well, so I was helping uh, my my son had had a, the baby was uh, Michaela was six months old when Rudy died, and now this is two and a half years later. I'm living in a condo, and they once a day I would have the two children. Uh, for the day, and I said to them, "Let's go do a picnic at the park." And because uh, I love pic, I, I'm an outdoors pro. I love to live outside. Okay, so we went to the park, and I packed hot dogs, of course, that's what, and marshmallows, the things they would like. 
and we started a fire and um for cooking our hot dogs and we had sticks and when one of the sticks came out keenan who was in five grabbed the stick but he grabbed it by the hot end and i just i saw a disaster and i had i was out in a park with all this stuff the kids and i a kid with a hand that's going to be mm. he's going to be i grabbed his hand so fast and i shoved it into my mouth and i said no 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 go 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 heal 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 normal 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 i went into the whole thing that i'd seen in a way that they were doing oh. and he pulled his hand out and he looked at it and he said he said what happened only oh. and it was gone there was nothing it was there was not a mark it was gone great that great was healing <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he went home to tell his parents, you know, and James thought, Mom, what are you into? What is this? I, I said, it works. So he could see the energy and, and seeing it healed. Okay, knowing there was another incident that I can tell you about was I had a car accident just before I was supposed to move here. And um, the guy stopped abruptly in front of me. I hit him. My airbag went off, hit my a very fragile chest. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember saying to my kids, if the accident doesn't kill you, the airbags will. Mm-hmm. Because I was sore. I was really, really, really sore from that. And I had to pack and had so much to do that I couldn't be sore. I had no time. I could hardly lift my arms. And I went to the doctor. They checked. And he said, nothing's hurt. You're just very bruised. The next morning I got up and I thought, you know, they always talk about intention and be yes. intentional. So I got to heal my chest. So that day, my job was to heal my chest. And I got up that morning and I started to do Chen Chi. Yes. And then I, Chen Chi, because I knew, I knew all about the, you know, I had learned that, um, first of all, I never thought that our organs were all like connected. Oh, we thought the heart sits there and the lungs sit there, but they're they're all in membranes and they're all connected. It all moves in there. So I started to do Chen Chi and I alternated between Chen Chi and La Chi. Oh. And as much all day long in between a, a drink of water and something to eat, and then I would, would be back at it. The next morning I woke up, the swelling was gone, the pain was gone, and I could pack. My name is Leila Cupido, and I'm the project manager of the Students Hub. Our team is constantly adding events, teachers, videos, and other resources to take your practice to the next level, improving the quality of your life and the life of the people around you. We do this work for you, so please use it. Hun Yuan Ling Tong. Great. I mean, it's uh, it's amazing how well you took on all these lessons. Then uh, I know you you went there for the purpose of having a good time, meeting great people. But yeah, you still been uh, very good students, obviously. That you taught, uh, that, you, that you took on all these things and are using them for yourself and for your family and the people around you. So uh, yes, that's that's great. Yeah, that's my aim. And now my I feel, I feel, that I've been spared death. Four times in one week, okay, where I was brought back. Yes. That there is, first of all, that my daughter walked in just as I was taking, going down, is she came to make me coffee. It was just two days after the surgery. And she knew I'd be getting up and she made coffee. And with that, I went down. And that she was there and knew what to do and called 911 and had it all in place. I've decided that there is a purpose. Yes. And I can't and I can't waste it. Mm-hmm. Sitting around feeling sorry for me is not what I'm going to do. Okay. Uh, we, moved moved. Out here. <laughs> we moved out here. We moved out here. It'll be 
five years this May that I moved out here to Nova Scotia. Well, when my sister again told me, oh, you know, really, you should think to go into a seniors where you'll get help when you need. I said, why? And she said, well, what if? And I said, I've never lived with what if. So I'm not going to start with what if now. Okay. So I said to her, I'm moving to Nova Scotia. James wants me to come along. I know that's where my husband wanted to go and retire someday. He wanted to move to the coast because we're only 10 minutes from the Atlantic. I live on a lake and I can be in 10 minutes at the Atlantic Ocean and I can walk, walk, watch, uh, walk the beach. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can be out there breathing all this beautiful air and keeping my lungs clean. Okay. And I garden, I have a greenhouse, I have plants growing right now, I have plants all over my house. I think I have 12 plants in this little space. So uh, I feel, as one lady said to me when I was in Hawaii, she asked me, why are you here on a farm? And I said, well, she said, because at your age, most women she used the word commit suicide in other words they quit they quit mm -hmm. doing and they get old and they go into the seniors homes and they get old and and wait to die mm -hmm. well I, that wasn't me that was never my plan and even when I was down in my lowest point there was no way I wanted to be there and so I said to my sister I'm moving to Nova Scotia and I'm buying a kayak. And I did. And I go out on the boat on my kayak. And I'm not the oldest lady on the kayak out here. There is an old man out here. I shouldn't call on that. A sweet old gentleman out up the lake. He is 92. If the day, every day when there's no ice on the water, he paddles his boat all the way up the lake and back. And he's and feeds the ducks. <laughs> And he's 92 years old. So, you know. Oh, no no excuse for you not to do it, right? No, I, no, I see him. On there, yeah. Up there, and I think, okay, there's my challenge, okay, right there. Get out on the boat, okay, and away you go. So, you know, there are so much we can do, even as seniors. Uh, I now volunteer. My children are both uh, paddlers. My grandchildren are bo both paddlers, and my son is on the committee for the club. And so I've been fundraising with them. I help raise money and make people happy. Great. And rumor has it, Hilda, that uh, you are invited to Italy to join um, uh, a healing retreat. Um, that's as not a rumor. That's a, that's a fact. I'll that's be there. Tell us about I'm that. In fact, in um, March, I'm heading to New York. And Lou is coming there, and then Richard is going to be hosting him, and I'm joining in in New York, and then hope to. I've never done Central Park, so I hope to be with some of, because there's a whole group of buddies there, and so I've joined. They're my uh, Qigong family. Okay, that I yes. connect with every week. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then you are then you are traveling further to Italy. And then, I'm, and that's in March. And then it, in Italy, I will be there. I'm hoping to go to Spain. Yes. While I'm there, and hopefully Abdiya doesn't know yet, but I hope to see Abdiya and her new baby. Okay, cool. So all friends from the Hunyaji therapy program. Oh, uh, I, uh, yeah. I have, I would go tomorrow to Lebanon to meet um, uh, Rasmik Rasmus, if yeah. I could, yes. you know. But it's that's very scary out there. So, uh, you know, so. No, uh, my family, my grandchildren, they'll see what I, and I'll talk about things. Or, um, in fact, my New York gang, a bunch of them came here and spent a whole week with me at my place last summer. Mm -hmm. So, you know what? Getting old is no joke, but it's all what you make of it. Right. Right. And I'm curious to hear also about, you know, how the people see you today that, you know, those years ago were saying, please take it easy. Uh, please go to uh, home. Well, okay. Uh, how did they see me? They think it's great what I'm doing, but they're not really, I've tried to introduce, I showed them some of the exercise because uh, I come from a family of eight. 
Okay, I'm in the middle of that batch. And so we were all in um, uh, in South Carolina on the beach there last year. And so they're walking badly and they're, they're having heart issues and they're having, oh, oh, a stroke, a couple of them. And I start to show them how to do exercises uh, on the beach there and like that. But, you know, it's got to be in your heart, too. You've got to yes. want to do it. It's got to grab you. And it's not something you just do once every month. Mm. Okay. It's um, if your body wants to be healthy, you need to move it regularly and move it often. Okay. Because in the good old days, people lived on farms and they did chinchi every day without knowing it in their right. working around. You know what I mean? They yes. did the act. Okay. And they also used your brain. Now people are from the couch to the car. Um, to the restaurant okay and um it's showing up on them but no they they were there they all were here i had them all here for a week and we celebrated my one brother's 50th and we did a, a seafood eastern dinner which was lobster and um with all the trimmings and they've all agreed that i couldn't have made a better choice mm -hmm. Very, very nice. And I, and I think we all have that experience in our lives that there are people where we feel it would benefit them greatly, you know, to do some exercises like Chile, Qigong, oh. but it just doesn't resonate with them. So I think all we can do is really you know, send positive information, include them in our training, in our chi field and so on. And That's through awesome. that, you know, yeah, doing what yeah, we can I, do. I, I, tell them, I tell them about YouTube channels, they will go to to see lift you up, pour you down, to learn to do that because there's great people on YouTube that are teaching that. And I've suggested that kind of thing. But you know what? Hey, this when I come home from home, when I go to visit the family at back home, I come home tired and a little and often upset. Mm -hmm. Because I don't like what I'm seeing. Okay. Right. But I can't change that. But when I go, when I go with my Qigong family anywhere, I come home invigorated. I come home with energy and like my neighbors will tell you that when I come home from like New York or wherever and have been with my Qigong family people, they, I just come, you know, it just energizes because we're on the same, we're in the same path. Right. Trying to encourage each other to stay healthy. Yes. To eat healthy. You know, you are what you eat and you are what you think. Mm. Okay. All right. Negatives, that... negative thoughts have to be turned into positive thoughts. Okay. Mm. Instead of, okay. So, yeah. I think that was wonderful to hear from you, uh, Hilda, and to share your story and where you're at. And uh, I think it's a great example. Um, and yeah. I know a lot of people would say, wow, she's so amazing, et cetera, et cetera. And you are so amazing on one level. But on another, you're just very clever because you do what does you good. You do what improves the quality of your life rather than rather than taking away from it. Yeah. So it's an excellent you know, choice. I had a very good doctor. I'll put a little thing in here. I had a very good doctor when my children were little who said to me, when something goes sideways, it's like they have a rash. He said, see what you've changed either in your diet or in the laundry soap. Right. He said, and know your body. Know your body. When you doctor gives you a pill and it makes you suddenly you're going down instead of getting healthier, get rid of that pill. Don't go tell them that yeah. pill because they will give you another pill to try to make that pill work better. So um, my, my thing is, I know we need doctors, but we really, before a doctor, we let them give us stuff. We should know what we're eating and to keep ourselves healthy and our exercise. If we have pain, we need to move because mm -hmm. there's a blockage, right? Mm -hmm. So you move and open that blockage so that you don't have to go. I mean, when my chest went, when that airbag hit, I had a lot of pain. Okay. And... Then one over in one night, one day it was gone. Okay. He wanted to give me painkillers. And I said, No, I don't want painkillers. He said, What are you gonna do? I said, Uh, 
watch me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> you know, so, so, yeah, I was, I mean, I came from a family. I mean, I was, my earliest memory of my childhood is standing in the food line. So this will give my age away. Standing in the food line, not a food line, holding a bowl to get my grits at a refugee camp. Mm. Okay. When Hitler, when the Russians first invaded Ukraine. Right. 80 plus years ago. Mm. Okay. That was, that's my first recollection. In the, the bowl of grits that I picked up, that was at a German. We had already left. And I was in a German uh, refugee camp waiting. My father was applying for immigration to Canada. Yeah. And we were blessed to get the okay. Right. That was my earliest recollection of my childhood. Yeah. Okay. So I saw parents that were strong and determined to make their life better. Right. I think. That helps to form you. That formed me. Yes, okay. I think that's a good, that is a great way of uh, of explaining why some people at some point in their life learn that lesson about what a commitment and intention really means. And in this case, it was a commitment and the intention of your parents towards your life and their own lives to make it work oh. and to get into a you know, much better situation. And you just take this on for the rest of your life. And, and now you're here uh, with an intention of you know, creating the best for you and the people around you. And uh, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's very uh, uh, formative to hear where that comes from. So if that is your first memory, uh, it makes total sense my, that it made you the woman that you are. My childhood was not as a playing uh, with dolls. Never had one. My first doll I got was in Canada. And, and well, the other thing was my father only he had lost his arm in a farming accident. My father played a piano though, with an artificial hand. He could entertain the crowd. So you know, we saw a man with um, a, de a determination to make a life for himself and his family. Yes. Okay. And um, so I think that has helped me a lot. That is part of that has formed that formed me into my way of thinking. And um, but you know, when you get old, like you know, if you listen to everybody, you want to just you could just quit. Okay, that would be the easy road. Mm -hmm. But I was never one to choose the easy road. And I think that. I think that is a beautiful, you know, finishing words of our conversation here, because uh, I, you know, there are many people at very different stages uh, of their lives and different stages of where their mindset is and you know what the, their commitment is towards their own life. And you know, hopefully, this conversation has given some of them, you know, a new inspiration of. Well, if Hilda can do it, then maybe I can do it as well. If Hilda finds this passion, maybe I can find that as well. And I think that is the purpose of this, one of the purposes of this conversation. So, uh, because we all learn from each other, and it's always great to see someone making it work. And so I, I thank you for that, Hilda. Yes, because, and you know, belonging to a group is really important. Like, okay, my husband and I, when we worked out, we always did it together because if one did it without the other, it didn't work. So when he went with my brother, I didn't go along. It didn't work. But when we decided to work together, we challenged each other. And when you work together in a group like Qigong, you challenge each other to be the best you can be, okay? And to, and to love yourself and love people. Thank you very much, Hilda. Thank you very much for this conversation. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. Um, uh, what is well, my schedule is pretty open. <laughs> have, you been, have you been on the lake today already, or is it still to come? Oh, no, there, no, we got a foot of snow yesterday. Oh, okay, so no way. It's snowing right now. And right now, the lake is not safe because we had a warm spell, and you can't. Uh, we're not going to take a chance because okay. it's very deep. Okay, so, okay. no, uh, I walk, but I live on a hill, and I live, like, in Austria. You know, when I came to Austria, that was to just like how I live, on a hill. 
Mm. Okay. My little house is on a hill. Everywhere, every which way I go, I have to go downhill or uphill or I never walk on the level. The only place I walk where it's really level is at the beach. <laughs> okay. So All right. But well, thank you All very right. much, Hilda. Have a fantastic day further. Um, and uh, thank you very much for the conversation. Thank you. And say hi to Britta from me, okay? I give her a hug. We trust you enjoyed this conversation and we invite you to subscribe to our podcast so we can stay in touch and notify you of future episodes. We will end today's episode with the eight verses meditation performed by Chin and Qigong teacher Katrin Hendricks. Enjoy. To get your free ebook on the 8 verses meditation, please check the show notes below.